I'm here to tell you a story. It's a story of sincerity and perseverance and heartache. It's the story of little Johnny and the clown. Little Johnny one day in the summer was out playing. Boys his age or want to do, frisbee, tag, parking lots in the park. Then he saw a poster on a pole displaying something which catched the eye of anything. And it was a poster for the circus. The circus that was coming this fall. Well, little Johnny loved the circus, as most boys his age did. And he ran home immediately to tell Mom and Dad the circus was coming to town. He wanted to go. Mom and Dad had some bad news for Johnny. Times were tough. The economy was bad. They couldn't afford to go. Johnny was crushed. That's not the end of our story. Johnny, being a strong-willed boy, hard-working, and quite smart, decided he was going to earn his way to that circus. He was going to go out, not play like the other boys for the rest of the summer. He was going to go out and get himself a job mow lawns, take out garbage, deliver papers, whatever it took. Because he was going to go to that circus, and he was going to earn it. Well, Johnny persevered throughout that summer. And by the time fall came around, he not only had enough money for a bag of popcorn and a ticket, but a big pop as well. And the fateful day came where Johnny was at the circus. And not only did he have his popcorn and his pop, he had a front row seat, too. Ah. Oh, the trapeze artists came, and they swung through the air with the greatest of ease, and they were working without a net. It was all very amazing, and Johnny was so impressed. And then the elephants came, and they were huge creatures, massive, but they walked with such grace, such strength. Johnny was impressed. And then the clowns, bring on the clowns. And they came in with their little clown car and their antics and their tricks and they threw their pies and they had fun. And Johnny again was impressed. And then suddenly, without a warning or preview, the lights dimmed and Johnny found himself the center of attention as a big spotlight shone on him. He was all lit up. And that clown came over and he says, well, what's your name, little boy? To which Johnny replies, I'm Johnny. And the clown says, and tell me, Johnny, are you the horse's head? No, goes Johnny, I'm not. Then you must be the horse's ass. And the lights come on and everybody laughs. Everybody's having a great time. It's amazing, it's incredible. Except for Johnny. Johnny's crushed, stunned in utter silence. Head down, popcorn has fallen on the floor, drink has fallen on the floor. He doesn't remember the rest of the circus at all. He doesn't remember how he got home. His parents begin to notice that Johnny has quite the funk. And after a week, they realize it's not just going away. The weeks become months. The months stretch on almost to a year, and his parents realize that Johnny has a serious problem. As any parents would do, being good parents, they take Johnny to a psychiatrist to get him some help. And after a few sessions, the psychologist comes along and figures, well, Johnny, the only thing you can do with this is you're going to have to deal with it. You pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and just take this problem in hand and deal with it. And Johnny goes, yes, you're absolutely right. Because he's a strong-willed boy, and he perseveres, he's dedicated. And he decides that he's going to study it masterfully, the art of the backhanded compliment cutting tongue and the insult. And so he does. And by the end of his elementary years, Johnny is well known to have a razor quick wit and a razor sharp tongue. But it's not enough. So he begins to study it in high school as well. He joins the debate team, he studies political sciences, and throughout his high school career, he gains many awards. And he's known to be very dedicated and very intelligent. And of course, highly skilled at the backhanded compliment 
the cutting tongue in the Arctic Union. But it's not enough. Johnny begins his university years with quite the reputation and with skills that are much sought, off, that sought after by many groups. He's quite the debater. And by the end of his university training, he's got a career as a debater for many political parties. And he actually is paid pretty well for it, known as being highly skilled, if not near master, of the cutting tongue, the backhand compliment of the RCA. But it's not enough. So Johnny works hard, and he perseveres, as he always has dedicated in his task. And he makes some rather wise investments with his job and his funds and his money, and he finds that he's actually getting quite wealthy. But it's not enough. But his research brings him to a discovery. Back in the Himalaya Mountains, Johnny discovers a temple, a monastery with monks. And these monks are dedicated solely to the art of the insult, the backhanded compliment, and the cutting tongue. Well, Johnny decides he must launch an expedition. He must go to this temple. He must go to this monastery and learn the art. It takes a little bit of money, but he has some to spend. And the expedition takes some time, and some porters die, and the local only will go so far until Johnny finds himself face to face with an immense cliff. A cliff he knows he must climb by himself. Climb by himself? and reach the top. And with the same perseverance and dedication that's carried him through many years, he does climb this cliff. And he reaches the top. As he crests the very top of this cliff, there sits a monk, rather unassumingly, on a comfortable, but not luxurious pillow. And before Johnny can even say a word, the monk cuts onto the bone with a quip, to which Johnny, with his legendary skill, has no response, can do nothing. Johnny is amazed, and he begs and pleads with the monk to let him stay here, learn their teachings, master their art. And the monk thinks about it for a short time and decides that this individual is obviously quite dedicated and strong though, and does have some skill. So he decides that Johnny shall indeed study at the monastery and will be allowed to master the art of the insult, the backhanded compliment, and the cut. Well, some years pass, and finally Johnny has learned everything there is to know. The monks can teach him no more. And they look at him and say, now you must be ready. And Johnny decides, yes, indeed he is. And thus he decides to return to the world. In his absence, his investments, wise as they were, have made him quite well. And he finds with wealth comes privilege. And one of those privileges was the ability to find the circus to which he went to so many years ago and to learn that not only is it the same circus, but they have the same clown act. And not only the same clown act, but the same head clown delivering the same insulting joke again and again and again to victims across the country. Well, Johnny discovers that the spotlight that lit him up so many years ago. It doesn't have quite so random. It was a little bit of lubrication. That spotlight can be made to shine precisely where he wants it to, at a precise time. And with a little bit more lubrication, Johnny decides to be there at that place in time. And it does come to pass that Johnny finds himself once more in the circus, once more in the front row, once more awaiting to the clouds. And while he's sitting there looking very dapper, very proper, a master of his art, the trapeze artists come, and they are just as skilled as ever, and still working with other men. But he is not impressed. And the elephants come, and they are just as huge and powerful as they've ever been, and yet still graceful. But he is not impressed. And finally the clowns bring on the clowns, and they have the little clown car, and they have their antics, and they throw their pies. And then suddenly, the lights dim, and the spotlight comes on, and Johnny once again finds himself, as planned this time, lit up. 
and the head clown, a little older now, but just as spry, walks over to Johnny and says, And what's your name, sir? To which he gets the cold reply, I'm Johnny. And the clown says, And tell me, are you the horse's head? Johnny replies, No. Then you must be the horse's ass. And before anyone can laugh and deliver with the precision of only a master can, Johnny replies, Fuck you, clown! The end. <laughs>